Hey, good morning. It's, uh, what is it, 7.40, 7.45, 10 minutes to 8 on a Tuesday morning. I'm in the far southeast corner of Albuquerque in the Four Hills neighborhood and going on a little morning walk here, a little morning hike. Kind of want to talk about my history of using typewriters. And specifically, it comes into the late 1970s. And I was in the, in the U.S. Navy stationed on a ship. I was actually on the USS Constellation, the Connie. And for a few months, I was doing a temporary assignment in another area on the ship. And my senior chief had an office. And in his office, this is where we used to hang out, was a red IBM Selectric 2. I kind of got his permission to, after normal business hours, I could use the typewriter. And that's what I did. At the time, I was starting to write a little bit of poetry, like a lot of young people do when they're away from home and all that, and they have plenty of time on their hands. And so I had a whole sheaf of handwritten poems, and I decided that I'd like to type them up, make them look professional, whatever that means. Yeah, that's what I did. I uh, started, after hours, started typing up my poems on his red IBM Selectric 2. I used his typewriter a lot during the next few months, and I actually remember, I think, when I got back off that temporary assignment, I still would sneak down there after hours and use the typewriter. But toward the end of my enlistment, I had a whole bunch of poems that were handwritten and still needed to be typed up. And I got out of the Navy, and a few months later, I decided that I needed to get a typewriter that would give me the same kind of quality imprint that I was getting from the IBM. And so that led me to going down to a store called Service Merchandise, and I bought a Smith Corona Daisy Wheel electronic typewriter. I think it was an SE100. It used the uh, H series ribbon cartridges. Yeah, so this is an uphill walk. Hence my breathing. So I used the uh, Smith Corona typewriter for the next decade or so. Continued to write poetry and typed up a number of poems in several volumes that just to this day remain bound in three ring binders, three ring notebooks, and uh, that's about it. But I would say that was my first experience with typewriters as a practical writing tool where I wasn't really conscious of the machine itself. It was just a tool to get high quality imprint onto paper. So anyways, not to belabor the whole history of the typewriter in my life, but the thing I noticed was the electronic typewriters were very much transparent to use. I mean, in the sense of they didn't really require much effort, finger effort, hand strength and all that. But there was always this self-consciousness about the fact that the ribbons were only one-time use. The cartridges for the Smith Coronas, if you did a lot of writing, you'd run out of ribbon and then you'd have to go buy another cartridge. So it began to be conscious to me that there was kind of a cost associated with electric typewriters, electronic typewriters, in the sense that Polaroid cameras and cartridge type razors are constantly needing refills. There's a cost associated with using them. And that was kind of something that started to become conscious to me and probably one of the reasons why I got into a manual typewriter. I think what kept me from really appreciating manual typewriters early on was when I was typing my poetry on the IBM, I really wanted to maintain that same quality of imprint. I didn't want the look of a manual typewriter. Of course, I was kind of young and didn't know any better back then. I think later on in the mid-2000s when I started, uh, I think when I got my first portable, the uh, Royal Mercury from John Lewis here in Albuquerque, that's kind of when I really discovered 
the utility of portable manual typewriters. But getting back to the electronic electric typewriter thing, uh, recently it's come to my attention that I have arthritis in my thumb, especially both thumb joints. I have a problem with this ring finger here and it does affect my typing. If I do a lot of typing on a manual typewriter, I'll definitely feel it. But I still like portable typewriters. <laughs> so this is kind of why I've gravitated, or at least gotten interested in exploring the world of thermal typewriters, because they're battery powered, they're portable, they're kind of like older laptops in that sense, in terms of size and weight. But they have the ease of use of a, an electronic typewriter. Yeah, I know all the limitations, the negative aspects of thermal typewriters. The paper isn't permanent and yada, yada, yada. But there's something about writing uh, to paper, the paper-based writing process, which I really love to do. I also find myself not able to write copious amounts with a fountain pen like I used to because of my hands. So electronic keyboard typewriters seem to be the easiest way that I can write. Write to paper, edit to paper. It's a nice workflow, but it has its drawbacks. Number one is these thermal electric typewriters are for the most part made in the 1980s during a time when consumer items were being cheapened and the engineering of plastic resins wasn't perhaps as sophisticated as it is now, but Suffice it to say that, just like a lot of other consumer items like of the time of the 1980s, like for instance VCRs, they went to mostly plastic gears and plastic parts. And that's the way it is with these thermal electric typewriters. They're pretty much that kind of build quality. And so of the three thermal typewriters I have, my favorite was the uh, Brother EP43 the, of the three, those three. But it broke recently. I was in the middle of typing, did a carriage return. The print head started moving back to the left about halfway over. You hear the motor kind of make a slipping noise and the carriage stopped. And uh, the print head, it's ran by a toothed belt off a little plastic gear train from a little motor. I took it apart. I couldn't really find any issue. I cleaned them, I re-greased them, and I was able to make it work a little more reliably, but it still slips intermittently. So pretty much that that uh, typewriter is dead. It's a parts machine now. But the good thing is those kinds of typewriters are commonly available on eBay and places online. So I might get me another one. But in the meantime, I'm starting to use the Canon Type Star 4 more. It is bigger, heavier, has a different uh, editing modes than the, the Brother. But it has a proportionally spaced typeface and fully justified mode, and so I've been enjoying typing proportional and fully justified with that machine. It really looks nice, even though it is just thermal paper. The challenging thing about being limited in how much manual typewriter use I can get, especially when I'm in the middle of a writing project and I want to do a lot of writing, and that sort of forcing me to, for a paper-based workflow, going to electric typewriters of some kind. The problem with that is I really do like to, to write out in public. I, I find inspiration from the stimulation of, you know, going to a coffee shop or someplace, or even out picnic table at a city park or whatever. You're limited by the kinds of electric typewriters you can take out and about away from house current. I think there was one or two Smith Corona daisy wheel typewriters that were battery powered, but they they were heavy and not very good. But that kind of leaves, for this kind of a workflow, it only leaves one option, really, which is thermal typewriters. As I said before, I think they're, they're kind of a hybrid device, part of a hybrid workflow, I should say. If you're in a writing project, you're gonna to wanna to edit your work. Usually that means scribbling in the margins and between the lines by hand, and then retyping, rewriting. Usually for me, it's several phases of paper-based editing and writing before the piece starts to look 
finished enough that I'll transcribe it in a word processor and during that phase do some more edits. And that's where basically it just needs to be polished. That's kind of my personal workflow. One of the advantages I find with writing to paper is that you can see the whole page at once. Unless you have a really big computer monitor screen like the kind you would have with a desktop computer, you can't really see the page, the whole page, and still be able to read all the text clearly from top to bottom on a small portable device. And that's sort of the advantage of paper, right? You have a printout, a typewritten sheet. You can scan that thing top to bottom, move your eyes around. Typewriting is great for the first capture, the early phase of writing, and it's also great for the intermediate editing phase where you could see the whole page all at once. Yes, thermal typewriters seem to be a solution for me personally. That's not to say that I dislike manual typewriters, not at all. For extended writing, they're not quite as practical for me. And also, there is the idea, or the experience in my case, that regardless of how well you service a manual typewriter, every one of my machines are in pretty good shape, yet at the same time, every one of my machines has a nagging little problem. A lot of times it's just intermittent. And I think this is really the nature of manual typewriters, to be honest with you. That's why there were so many repair shops back in the day. So all this to say that sometimes the fiddly nature of manual typewriters, which is a fun aspect to the hobby, the typewriters as a hobby. It's fun, I love to tinker, I like mechanical things. But if I'm in the middle of writing, trying to create, that can be really distracting, to be honest with you. Because one part of my brain is trying to work on this story, crafting these characters, trying to find the voice of the characters. And the other part of my brain is like, oh, that could be an escapement issue. Maybe I need to do this or that. I start thinking about the machine. I start obsessing over it pretty soon. I've lost that mindset of creativity through distraction. So for me, for creative writing, portable, battery-operated, mobile types of paper-based typing workflow, dang, I'm starting to like them thermal typewriters. Hate to say it, doesn't mean I'm going to give up manual typewriters anytime soon, but for my limitations and my uses, yeah, they're starting to, starting to sound pretty good to me. What a nice morning. I was talking to my next door neighbor the other day, I think it was Sunday, and as the conversation was winding down, he suddenly asked me, how's the book coming along? And I was kind of startled for a second. I just said, oh, fine, fine. Didn't say much else, but I, you know, I didn't, I don't have a book. I don't know where he got the idea that I was writing a book. Well, he knows that I dabble with typewriters, so probably he's thinking, you know, he's a writer, not a typewriter dabbler, which, as you guys know, is two different things, right? But <laughs> I kind of took it as a sign, a sign from God or from the universe, that maybe he's trying to tell me that I need to start writing a book. <laughs> Since I sort of acknowledged I was, and in order for me not to be lying to him, yeah, I guess I'm writing a book. The only problem is I, I just don't know what it's about <laughs> yet. But it'll come to me. Probably another good reason to uh, pull out one of them daisy wheel typewriters. I have two electronic daisy wheel typewriters made by Nakajima. You would think, given my little arthritic, poor little hands, <laughs> that I would be using those more often. And actually, you're correct. Currently, the typewriter I've had in my office for a few months on the typing table is the Olympia SG3. It's a great manual machine, probably one of the best manual machines ever made. But I don't really like to use it for extended writing sessions, obviously. But I should probably break out the daisy wheel machines and not worry about using the carbon film ribbons. 
I should probably do that. So I'm changing the subject here slightly. But when I was in high school, I used to ride a 10-speed bike, a yellow Schwinn Varsity. It was a hand-me-down. Belonged to my dad, and then my older brother had it. When he left home, I had it. I, I used to ride from northeast Albuquerque over here to this part of Four Hills and hike these foothills around the big boulders and watch the airplanes take off and land at the runway right down there. So that was fun. That was back in the early 70s when this part of town wasn't so busy and you could actually ride a bicycle on a major thoroughfare without risking getting killed. But I uh, wouldn't do that these days. Yeah, so these old foothills are kind of familiar to me. And we're actually on the Manzano Mountains side. We're, so Tijeras Canyon, basically we're Interstate 40 cuts east through the mountains. So north of there is the Sandia Mountains, south of there is the Manzano Mountains. So we're sort of technically in the Manzano Mountains. Manzano being Spanish for apple. And Sandia is Spanish for watermelon. So I was reminded recently that both Sharp and Casio made thermal typewriters. So since my brother EP43 is now a uh, parts machine, I think I'm going to go look for one of those two. Try out a different brand. Okay, this is Joe Van Cleve hiking in the foothills, four hills, next to Monzano Base. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think about thermal typewriters? Do you have hand issues? Are you old enough to have arthritis? Can you write extended sessions on a manual typewriter? Do you have problems? Do you prefer electric typewriters, electronic typewriters? Let me know down below. Let's have a conversation about this. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.